Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Learn GSP with Mahesh. Today we will see 7 steps to get started with your Google Cloud Architect journey. So let's get started. So before we get started, just wanted to highlight a thing which I've started recently. So I have started on my own uh, giving Google Cloud Architect training. These trainings are basically customized training. So I have already finished uh, two batches. Uh, specifically for Google Cloud Architect. So I'm starting my third batch uh, from 6th of June this weekend. It's on a weekend uh, training. So for four hours, if you're really interested, reach out to me uh, either on my email or on my uh, LinkedIn profile. And I have posted this uh, stuff already in my LinkedIn profile and in my uh, YouTube channel. If you're really interested, reach out to me. Now let's look into the first step which you should do uh, to start your journey. The first and the foremost important step is create your GCP free tier account. This is very very important. The reason is uh, you may see lots of videos, lots of training videos uh, from official channels, all those things. But only when you get your hands dirty, meaning try your stuffs by yourself, try to create a cluster, Kubernetes cluster, try to create a data pro cluster or try to create a data fusion instance, only then you will understand the concept very well. It could be really helpful for you to clear the certification there. And it will also help you to do real real world activity when you become a cloud architect. So getting your hands dirty is most important. For that, you need to have a GCP account. So if you're doing this for your self-learning purpose and for a career upgrade, and in your organization, it's not currently, the current organization in which you're working are not GCP focused, but they are not they are focusing on something else and you want to have a career upgrade and you are focusing on GCP you will definitely not have a corporate account there and even in corporate account if you have I don't uh, recommend you to try out their things because in your corporate account it is for a specific customer so it should not be misused there so the best option is to always create a free tier account Google is very very generous with respect to this they provide you 300 credits 300 US dollar credits for 12 months so which is valid for 12 months no other cloud provider provides you this much generous uh, free tier option most of the cloud provider provides you only one month but Google provides you for 12 months just utilize this you just need to have a Gmail ID that's it go ahead and try to create it and if you don't know how to create the free tier account look into my YouTube channel I already have a video on that and I'll paste the link uh, in the description channel if you want to refer to that video. So that's our first step in our journey. The second step is uh, when you start exploring, once you have your free tier account, you log into the GCP console, you'll have lots of services. You will definitely get lost with those services. So it will not be able to connect what is this service, what is it maps to, what is the purpose of this service. For example, DLP. If you see something like that, you may not understand it. It is actually data loss prevention API, which can help you to mask sensitive information. Similarly, if you see something like Kubernetes, and if you are totally new to Kubernetes, you don't understand what is that, you can get those meanings in maximum four words in a uh, GitHub page created by a Googler. Uh, and the page, you can just search it by GCP in four words in Google and you should get to that page. It's a GitHub page and what is my recommendation is and when you are in the learning phase, make sure you download a high resolution image. The one which I'm referring is, I'm referring to this image. I have already downloaded this to my local system. Make sure you download a high resolution. Once you download it right, usually you will have your own personal laptop. So this is my personal laptop and this is my uh, wallpaper so in the beginning stage if you were to do something learn more about gcp i highly recommend you to turn this image as your wallpaper so that way what happens is every day you come to your personal laptop you'll see the screen the home screen and which will make you look into the services because as a cloud architect you are expected to know each and every services at a high level you should know everything. So this uh, article or this uh, GCP in four words article will help you to learn all the services. A simple example, four words example. It's a four word explanation, which is really, really cool. So make sure you put this as your wallpaper at least for a month. Once you get uh, hands on into your GCP, you know what service 
means what and what is the purpose of it you can remove your wallpaper and put back your favorite wallpaper so that is a second uh, step which i recommend moving on to the step uh, three explore the command line options so when it comes to google cloud right you can create a resource in uh, different forms you can use your command line you can use your web console you can use a couple of other options uh, if you want to explore you can explore that one is using a uh, client libraries one is using rest api so you can also use it with something called as a deployment manager you can create it in different flavors so but the two important thing from the exam perspective is you need to know how to create it in a web console the ui and the command line so let me show you that this is my web console uh, where I'm trying to create a virtual machine. So whenever you try to create a virtual machine, assume the requirement is you need to create a virtual machine which is preemptible. So if you have looked into the videos of my, so you will know how to create it. Or if you have started exploring by yourself, you should be knowing how to create it. Uh, just click on the management tab and you should be able to see a drop down called as preemptibility. Turn it on. When you do this, the virtual machine becomes a preemptible virtual machine. Now, this is all good, but do you know the command line equivalent of uh, preemptible uh, to turn a virtual machine into preemptible? May not be, the answer may be no. So to explore it, just come to the bottom of the screen and you will have a command line equivalent of it. Just click on it and you will know what is the equivalent flag which you need to pass when you are doing it in the command line, which is nothing but pre hyphen hyphen preemptible. So this could be really important from the exam perspective. So who knows, you may get questions even to say, what is the this thing to create a virtual machine which is preemptible? What is a flag? You may get such things also. So having such awareness will make you easily answer questions. So the best practice is always, whenever you create any resource, make sure you come to the bottom of the screen and look whether you have this option. So I have seen, so you get this for your, virtual machines for your Kubernetes cluster, for your data proc, for your cloud SQL instance, you get this service, the small option for many of the services. Google is trying to put it for all the services. So here and there you may see some in some services it's not there, but soon it should be there made available. So throughout my journey I have seen it. So it has been continuously been uh, updated. Look for this, try to leverage this. So that way Every time you create a resource in the UI, make sure you click on this command line and get to know the command line equivalent of it. So that can sometimes help you to answer few questions in the exam. So that's your uh, third step, which I wanted to recommend. Moving on to the next step, which I recommend is refer to the decision trees. So what do you mean by decision tree? So when you start exploring the GCP steps, you will go module by module, uh, compute engine. Kubernetes engine, app engine. Similarly, then after you finish all the compute option, you'll go to uh, storage options. But once you finish all the compute options, compute engine, Kubernetes engine, cloud, uh, cloud run, cloud functions, app engine in app engine, app engine standard and flexible. There are lots of compute options. In the beginning stage, right, it makes very difficult for someone to give a right choice. What should I use for a specific uh, kind of requirement? It can make you difficult in the beginning days. So Google's decision trees, there are lots of GCP uh, decision trees which, uh, which is available in the internet. Just search for Google or GCP decision trees. You should get tons of materials there. So I wanted to show you some couple of important uh, decision trees which I use extensively. So this is one such decision tree so to choose your right compute option. This article is created uh, almost three years back. So it's slightly outdated. Uh, the reason why I say it is slightly outdated is we don't see cloud run here. So apart from that, most of them are there. Look into this article and the best part of this article is it gives you a decision tree. So unfortunately, the resolution is not good with this image. I have tried to open it. Uh, I have zoomed this so you can look into this uh, image and have a flow understood. So this is a very cool one. I use this extensively in my trainings also. So refer this, it will give you lots of insights. Similarly, Google has uh, in its compute option, there are three serverless uh, options which it provides. Cloud Run, Cloud Functions and App Engine Standard. If you met where to make a decision, which one should I go for? look into this uh, decision tree, which is a really a cool one. 
on the same lines recently google has uh, released a decision tree for networking options this was in the month of april a month ago or a couple of months ago so this is really a cool option because networking is something sometimes difficult for some people to uh, understand this decision tree will help you to understand when to use vpn when to use interconnect in interconnect dedicated interconnect and partner interconnect and in peering direct peering or carrier peering so it gives you that nice decision here go for it and try to explore this the next step is uh, try to connect two gcp services that should be our learning curve so as i mentioned in the beginning you will start with individual modules virtual machines Kubernetes cluster. Once you finish all the compute option, you'll jump into storage, in storage, Google Cloud storage, Cloud SQL, Big Table, all those things you'll start exploring it. But what you're doing is directly you are referring to one specific module and uh, understanding the concept. But when you try to connect two different services, you'll know how it works because as an architect, you're not going to only uh, propose virtual machines. There will be virtual machines, there will be database, there will be Google Cloud storage, how they communicate each other. That could be something very important. So by connecting two different services, you will learn the concepts much deeper. For example, if you were to connect a compute engine with, uh, if you were to communicate between compute engine and Google Cloud Storage, what could be the important aspect which you need to consider? If you want to think, pause the video and think about the solution. And if you've got it, awesome, congratulations. The one important thing which can come into picture is between two services, in this case, virtual machines and storage, is your service account. Whether if you have the right service account to read and write or just read from your Google Cloud storage bucket is an important thing. Another important aspect which may come into picture between, in this case, is private Google access. So that using a private IP address, you can connect to your Google Cloud storage and get some updates. That is another important thing. So all those things you learn by connecting two different services. That should be the approach. Once you expertise connecting two different services, virtual machines to Google Cloud Storage, virtual machines to BigQuery, virtual machines to Cloud SQL, uh, something of that sort, try to expand your uh, level. From two services, try to expand it to two, three services, PubSub, Dataflow, BigQuery. So if you have this kind of an architecture, you can handle streaming analytics with PubSub, Dataflow, BigQuery. So that should be your approach towards the learning. So in your step six, there are certain things we should be aware of as a cloud architect. So, so far you would have understood how two services can be interacted, which service to use when. But there is one thing which you need to understand which service not to use uh, for a specific use case. Because for example, virtual machines are meant for uh, a specific, uh, specific use case. Similarly, App Engine would be built for specific uh, uh, purpose. You cannot use it for all the purpose. So you should know when not to use a specific service. That is very, very important, which helps you to design nice architectures when you know when not to use a specific service. For example, just wanted to give you a couple of examples here, App Engine. So you cannot host a database, an IBM, 2, uh, IBM DB2, instance in app engine because app engine is web focused similarly if you were to host a database which is having 50 terabytes of volume you cannot run that or host it in cloud sql because as of today uh, cloud sql can handle only 30 terabytes of data that's the upper limit so similarly if you have a, a business logic which needs to be written in the database layer itself as store procedures and triggers then you cannot use data uh, cloud spanner there. So similarly, for example, if you have a legacy uh, workload, which you cannot containerize, then forget about using uh, Kubernetes concepts there because if you cannot containerize, Kubernetes will not come into picture. So knowing when not to use a specific service will be really, really helpful. Moving on to the step seven, the most important thing, you need to be cost sensitive. You should always create a solution which is cost optimized. So what do you mean by this? Just because Google provides you uh, 300 credits, $300 of credit, you should not just create a resource and just leave it running there. So 
right from day one when you activate your free tier account make sure you create a resource you learn the concept once you learn the concept either stop the resource or delete the resource certain resource can be stopped like cloud sql uh, compute engine certain resource cannot be stopped so you have to delete it like your kubernetes cluster your uh, data pro cluster all those things so make sure either you delete it or stop it that is an important thing the reason is when you do this activity right it gets registered in your mind saying that you have to be very cost sensitive so the same thing will carry forward when you do a real architecture so that is an important thing because every organization irrespective of the the scale they want a cost optimized solution so this part will play a major role and another important tool which can help you for building a cost optimized solution is is your gcp cloud uh, pricing calculator so you should be aware of what resources are built per second what resources are built per hour for example spanner is built per hour virtual machines are built per second so if you know that when to use what and if the resource is in us central the price is different if the resource is provisioned in uh, mumbai it is different so you should know all those details so only when you know all those thing details you can build a cost optimized and uh, be very sensitive towards pricing so those are the seven steps which can help you to get started in your cloud uh, google cloud architect journey and as i mentioned it was seven but i wanted to give you uh, one more bonus step which is for specifically for aws and azure uh, professionals so if you are coming with uh, other cloud uh, expertise like aws and azure google provides you a nice article specifically for azure and uh, aws so the url is www. Uh, sorry not www uh, cloud.google.com/docs/ compare slash aws so if you go here it is specifically designed for aws professional similarly for azure professionals where it shows a one to one mapping so if you are very well versed with uh, comfortable with aws ac2 is nothing but your compute engine aws lambda is equal to your cloud functions that way you can easily connect your well known product with the new product which you are trying to learn similarly in azure also you get uh, such similar uh, one to one mapping so you can know okay what is this in azure what is the mapping in gcp so you can get that details easily here for example if you are doing something with vpc in gcp it is equivalent to your azure vnets once you know the uh, equivalent right you should start digging into the difference of those kinds of products for example azure vnets are regional but when it comes to google's vpc these are global in nature so such way if you start uh, getting the difference right you will be able to learn gcp faster so that is a step for uh, a bonus step uh, for gcp so for aws and azure uh, professionals so those are the seven steps which can help you to get started with your google cloud architect journey whether you are a newbie or a professional aws or azure prof uh, azure professional it should help you uh, to get started in gcp let me know which step was really helpful in the comment section i'll be happy to know that uh, that's the video which i wanted to share today thank you for watching